Welcome Traceable Designers. Today we're making the Arch Style Lambrequin side panels. We will be adjusting the side panels for complete coverage of the outer window frame. The No Sew Valance design form can be adjusted for length and width. Before you begin, make sure to remove the gray shaded area from below the design form. As you can see, the form is semi-transparent, so you can properly adjust your print. You'll want that to match on both the left and right side panels. So we're going to be making them separately. In addition, you're going to make a rod pocket. So you have a choice of either for a wide pocket rod or a small one inch rod. Today we'll be using the one inch rod. You can also adjust your width. So that would be the width of both side panels. You wanna do those evenly for each one. And then to extend the length, you use the straight section in the middle of the design form. To properly size your fabric, make sure that you drop down to your chosen arrow for your rod pocket. This will be a three inch section above for a one and a half inch rod pocket. And then slide your design form all the way down and make sure you have plenty of length. Know how far your length is from the top of your rod and then you'll cut your, your fabric properly. My first panel is going to be a left side panel, so my design forms upside down on the back side of the fabric. So you'll just mark off your rod pocket, the selected uh, depth, and then that way you'll know where to position the top edge of the design form. Pull out your heat and bond fusible backing and size that to fit inside of the margins and you'll align that across the rod pocket marks. Then we'll add the longer side for the second piece. So align that along your marks and then turn the steam off of your iron. You're using a dry iron and a sweeping motion. Make sure your, your backing doesn't move. Start in the center, sweeping up and down, and then move out toward the sides, pushing out so you get rid of any buckling. Don't hold your iron still, keep it moving, and use a medium high heat dry iron until that's completely fused. Next, we're going to size our second piece of backing to go the full length of the panel, but we want to make sure it's wide enough to cover the area where we'll be uh, doing the curve and sweeping around and then all the way down. So when you're cutting that to size, make sure you've got full coverage. Cut your panel, position it again evenly and overlap that and then just fuse that down. Then once that paper has completely cooled, you'll be able to peel it back. And when you remove that, you want to reserve that for covering your ironing board or your table when you're putting on your glue. Now, when you do the second piece, you did overlap that, so you have reserved or residual glue from the other section. So make sure to cut that off if you're planning to apply heat or it will stick to your ironing board. Cut a piece of lining that's straight across the top that is going to cover the entire glue section. So this is an L shape and it needs to expend, extend past all the edges. So again, starting in the center, sweeping out to get rid of buckles. We'll just fuse this lining down securely. Keep going over it until it's completely secured, sweeping out toward the sides. Do the upper section first making sure it stays along the glue line on the top so that you have your rod pocket area unlined above. And then you're going to use the sweeping motion the same way, right down the side and out until you've completely secured your lining to your fabric back. To position your design form for tracing, make sure it's very straight along the edge. I do have the white mark from the fabric and then also straight across your rod pocket. Now I'm removing a little bit of width, so I'm marking the arrows top and bottom. The first thing you do when you trace your design form is you do the underneath upper section. If you're adding any length, you wanna stop at the area for the straight extension. So you'll trace around your curved edge and then you'll be ready to lengthen your panel, but you wanna move that all the way down to the bottom to your length marker and trace the bottom edge first. Then you're going to connect the straight section. So trace that off and then you'll connect the straight section. Now, if you are only adding a little bit of length, you can connect the straight section by just sliding the design form down and tracing. But since I have a really wide gap, I'm going to just use the outside edge of the design form to connect the bottom and the top section. So I'm just going to align those along the straight edge and then along the bottom to connect my lower and my upper design ends. So now I have a completely traced panel. 
Now I'm going to adjust my width so I had made my marks earlier. And the reason I did that is I needed to trace my underneath shape without adjusting my width so that I had that positioned properly. Then carefully follow the trace line and you can just cut out your panel, follow along, moving slowly, make sure it's very straight and make sure that when you get to the curved side you have a nice curve on the inside and then the underneath section and then you'll be able to just cut off the outer edges and cut all the way up across the rod pocket section. I usually run an iron across it to make sure it's all very secure before moving on to making the rod pocket. So you'll fold your rod pocket over to meet your lining and then just iron that down so it's flat. And then we're going to use heat and bond to secure the rod pocket. So you'll cut a strip that fits inside of that folded section without overlapping onto your lining or extending past the top edge. And then just fuse that across and when that has completely dry, uh, cooled, you can pull that off. This ran a little short, so you can just always cut another piece and just add that on the end. Then just remove the paper once it's 100% cooled, and then this will hold your pocket in place. So when that gets folded over, you have an open rod pocket. So pull that taunt over top of the lining and take your time to really fuse this. You're going through several layers of fabric, so it might take a while to get that to seal. Let it completely dry before you move on. Let it cool. This is a completed panel. We're going to add edge trim and you can see I have a rod pocket on the back. So you're going to pull out your edge trim and just run it along the edges to make sure you have plenty and then pull out that reserved paper from the backing. I'm using Unique Stitch which is a great liquid glue and I'm using this rather than fusing on my trim. This, this does hold really well and it does dry clear. I love the product. So I'm using my braided gimp trim. It's a 3 8 inch and I'm just following along the glue. Now that it's wet I can reposition it and get it just perfect. This is really important as far as the professional look of your panel that that trim is really straight and positioned beautifully. As you go up the straight side you can pull your trim a little bit taut and that'll straighten it right out. Now when you get to your curves just put some glue in the corner and then hold it for a little bit to get that to secure. You want nice sharp curves and nice um, sweeping around your your corners. So you'll hold that. This, this part takes a little longer. Once it dries you can continue to move on and then just continue with your trim all the way around your panel and up and then you're going to secure it behind the rod pocket. So snip it off and then just glue that on. To finish your trim on the outside edge just snip off the lower the low, lower extension to make that flush. Make sure the trim direction is the same. Then you'll extend your trim a little above the pocket. If you have a, a little bit of a uneven edge you can cut that off and then you'll just glue the lower section underneath the panel. To help your long side panels stay perfectly straight we've included push pins so once you've hung your panels you'll then secure those at the lower edge and any inside um, area that's needed to make those hang nice and straight. Once you've made both left and right side panels you'll be making either just a connector panel or connector panels along with center panels. If you'd like to make the same connector panel shown in this video that is the ornate style center panel converted into a connector panel so you'll want to watch that video tutorial. Thank you for joining me Traceable Designers and remember you can always make your mark with Traceable Designer.